All right, folks. So today we're going to talk a little bit about scanners and we're going to talk about Baofangs and we're going to talk about using a Baofang as a scanner and if it's a good idea or not. The reason we're making this video is it's a question that comes up often and instead of typing in a long response, I would rather just give them a link to a video and say, here's my thoughts on the matter. Uh, I did recently do a scanner video. One of the questions that came up is that, can I use a Baofang to do this? Why can't I use a Baofang to do this? I can use a Baofang to do this. So it's all three different takes on the same, some people say as a declaration, some people say it as a question, and some people say it as a, I don't know if it's a fact or something along those lines. But anyhow, this is a video response to that particular statement. Uh, before we get started, I did want to say that I love Baofangs. I have Baofangs. I have a number of them. Here's one right here. Uh, I do videos on them. I use them. I like them. I'm a Baofang enthusiast. I'm not a hater. But what I am here to do is report the facts as I see them. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started on that. The first thing I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the similarities between a Baofang and a scanner. Now, there's a lot of different types of scanners on the market. There's only a few different types of Baofangs. So this is going to be a generalization. All right, so we're going to take a few minutes to talk about the similarities between these two devices uh, because many people confuse them for some reason and they say, well, you know, the Baofang can do the same thing as the scanner and the scanner. Anyhow, when we take a look at these, they're both black. They both have antennas and they both have a knob. They both have buttons. They both have a speaker. They both have options for a belt clip and they both run off of batteries. And that's pretty much where the similarity, oh, they both can receive signals. And that's pretty much where the similarities end. All right, so we talked a little bit about some similarities. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the differences. The first difference is that your scanner is not going to interfere with any first responder transmissions. Uh, anybody who's in the ham radio space, a two-way radio space, knows that there have been lots of concerns or criticisms of Baofang because of their ability to transmit out of the ham radio spectrum and cause potential interference or potential problems. So that's not going to happen with a scanner. The second thing I wanted to mention is, is that Baofangs are notorious for having a poor front end. And what that means is that their receive capability is somewhat limited based off of the quality of parts used inside these Baofang radios. Again, I'm not a Baofang hater, I'm a Baofang realist. And I've used Baofang radios and I have seen firsthand where they become overloaded, they suffer from intermodulation problems where they don't hear well. Uh, a lot of times people buy an extra antenna and say, oh, I got a better antenna for my Baofang. And as a result, let me go ahead and just mute that so it doesn't happen again. As a result of my better antenna, sometimes I get more overloading of my front end and I have problems. So some Baofangs are better than others. They're not all created equal, but most Baofangs don't have a front end that compares to the front end that you would get on a scanner. And as a result, you're not gonna hear the same things. The other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is scan speed. If you've used a scanner and then you've used the scanner function on a Baofang, it's noticeably different. It takes a lot longer to scan through your program channels on a Baofang than it does on your scanner. Uh, some folks may say, hey, this is not a problem. I'm not in a hurry. Okay, well, maybe that's not a problem. When you start to talk about scanners that have thousands of, of entries in there versus the 128, I believe, is the limitation on a Baofang, the speed definitely becomes a problem or an issue or a concern. The other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is bandwidth. And so the Baofangs typically operate on uh, UHF and VHF. Uh, it does extend beyond the ham bands. We talked about that before. Um, but your scanners can go down to 27, 28, 29 megahertz, go all the way up to 800, 900 megahertz. So they can scan a much, much wider uh, spectrum slice or, or more frequencies than you can on a Baofang. So maybe that's important to you, maybe it's not. The other thing I wanted to talk about is, is that you can buy scanners that can decode, not decrypt. There's a difference. They can decode digital signals. There's all kinds of different digital signals in play today, and you can buy scanners that can do this. Baofangs cannot do that. The other thing that I was going to mention is, is that you can buy scanners that allow you to listen to trunked systems. Trunked systems are typically where you have a control channel and then multiple channels that users will bounce around on based off of assignment from the control channel. You can buy a trunk capable scanner. You cannot buy a trunk capable Baofang. 
The other thing is, is that you have something called step size. So when you are using the adjustment knob to go through frequencies on your Balfang or your scanner, you can set your device to have a specified step size. This is the spacing between channels. Is it important? I don't know. It seems like it is. And the thing is, is that your scanners can come with different step size depending upon the frequency bank that you are scanning or the frequency allocation that you're scanning. It's not a global setting on the scanner. It's specific to this frequency set. On the Balfang, it's a global setting. So if you wanted to change that or you needed to change that, you're changing it for everything. The other thing is, is that you have different modes. You have FM narrow and FM wide. Your Balfang can do that and so can your scanner. But your scanner can also do things like AM. Sometimes you can get them to do other things, but uh, it's, not, it's not as common. Um, the Balfang cannot scan AM, so you cannot scan airband, for example. The other thing I was going to talk about are banks. So on a scanner, typically you have multiple banks, which are groupings or collections of frequencies. And I can say, for this particular location, this particular activity, I want to scan banks 2, 7, and 9. And I can do that from the front keypad easily. When you're Balfang, if you want to scan frequencies, you have to scan all of your frequencies. If you want to scan channels, you have to use computer programming software to go in and designate a channel as scannable. You cannot do that from the front panel of your keypad. You cannot do that in the field. You have to do that with the computer. And it's binary. It's either scannable or not scannable. You can't say scan it if it's part of this list. Don't scan it if it's not part of this list. So that's another difference between a scanner and a Balfang. The other thing is, is that my scanner has uh, weather alerting. So I can set it that if a emergency weather broadcast comes along, my scanner will notify me of that. While I can scan or I can listen to weather frequencies, the NOAA frequencies on my Balfang, I cannot have it alert me in the event of an emergency. The other thing is, is that scanners often come with something, at least the unit and scanners, called close call. So while I'm scanning my programmed frequencies, I can also scan frequencies that are not programmed as a channel in my scanner. And any strong signals that come through, my scanner will stop on those and give me the option to listen or not. You can't do that with a Balfang. The other thing is, is I can designate a channel as a priority scan. So if there is a channel that I feel is more important than other channels, I can scan it with more frequency, a little pun right there, than other channels that are programmed into my radio. You can't do that with a Balfang. The other thing I wanted to talk about was a lockout. So if I have a collection of channels that I want to listen to on my scanner, but for whatever reason, one of them is creating some interference or static or noise and my scanner is hanging on that, I can just push a button to temporarily lock that out and continue scanning without any issue. Well, my Balfang, if I encounter something like that, I would need to connect it to a computer and I would have to remove the eligibility for scanning from that particular channel. And to add it back, I would have to go back into the computer, read my code plug from my Balfang, make the change, and then write it back. It's not like that with a scanner. The other thing I wanted to talk about is, is that I can easily add channels and frequencies to the front panel through the front panel of my scanner. And then I can add them to banks and scan lists. I can't do that with a Balfang. I can add channels, sure, um, but, I, but it's not as easy to mark them, it's impossible actually to mark them as scan eligible. The other thing I was gonna talk about is a concept called um, service banks. So on my scanner, I have things that are called uh, service banks that are collections of frequencies that are specific to certain use cases. So for example, I have a service bank for railroad frequencies, the span of frequencies that are typically used on railroads. So if I wanted to listen to those and I don't have any channels programmed into my scanner or I've traveled to a new location where potentially I want to use, uh, use the scanner to listen to railroad, I just go to that service bank, turn it on and scan. I can do the same thing with Airband. I can do the same thing with uh, Marine and other services. You can't do that with a Balfang. So that really is going to cover the differences. What I wanted to do is I wanted to encourage everybody to go to radio reference and then you can take a look at your location and you can take a look at the different services that are available for monitoring. You can see if they're trunk systems, digital systems, analog systems, FM, narrow, wide, encrypted. Uh, you can educate yourself and find out what's scannable in your area and find out what's best for you. 
The other thing I wanted to mention is, is that a lot of times folks will say, well, you can't scan because everything's digital. You can't scan because everything's encrypted. That may or may not be true. Again, you can see that on radio reference. Uh, a lot of times you'll have an area that has gone to trunked digital services like a P25 phase one or two. Now, I'm not trying to be overly technical because I'm really not. Um, but what I wanted to say is, is that those services are often patched, uh, the dispatch portions of those services are often patched to analog services because maybe that location can't afford to give everybody who works for them a digital scanner. So you can still listen to that stuff on analog. Now you can program those frequencies on the Baofeng and you can in a limited fashion listen to them. Sure, you, you could do that, but you're going to get a lot more mileage, a lot more enjoyment, and you're going to get a lot more scanning in if you actually use a scanner. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below. Any comments, suggestions, or recommendations, post them below as well, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it.